Now I will call to order our June meeting and welcome everyone here that has joined us this evening. And the first item is um, our prayer and Mrs. Morrison Fair, if you will lead us in our prayer. Good evening, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, tonight we come to simply say thank you for the successes and victories that we have experienced in this school year 2022-23. We appreciate the many young people that we had some part in helping and steering them toward the next phase of their lives. We look forward to our new year which will bring new highs and lows, but always opportunities that bind us together as a united body with the outcome always being children first. Give us love, understanding, and compassion for our fellow man as we work together to create new pathways for the class of 2023, 20, 24, and all of our children in Greenville County. Allow each of us to identify our special talents that will make an impact as we go forward. Finally, we ask your grace, your mercy, and bountiful blessings, and we will always give you honor and praise. Amen. Amen. And now it is my pleasure that we have two students this evening um, to turn this over to our um, Sarah Doolin, who is going to introduce some special guests that are going to lead us in our pledge this evening. It's my pleasure to introduce students from District 27. This is Elizabeth Glenn, who is a rising seventh grader at Malden Middle. She has placed into all honors classes and finished the year with all A's. She performed in Baldwin Middle's Cafe Players production of The Music Man and also enjoyed palm dance practice all year with Malden High Mavet's coach in preparation for auditioning for her school's dance team next year. After appreciating the arms program, for violin for two years at the Fun Arts Center. She has decided to change directions and has been accepted to the ARMS Visual Arts Program at the new Southern location. Thank you everyone for approving that Southern location. She has also taken advantage of opportunities to participate in the pilot for the WINGS Leadership Program and Junior Beta Club. When she graduates, she would like to attend the College of Charleston and she is joined by her sister Eloise. Eloise is a rising first grader at Monarch Elementary. Um, the last week of school, Eloise was honored with the Kind Heart Award as well as the Music Enthusiast Award. And when asked what she, what she thinks her greatest accomplishment was in kindergarten, she says that her crafts look really, really good. She also enjoyed palm dance classes this year and will join the, Ma the Malden Mavettes at Mini Mavs camp this summer, as well as attend the highly coveted Fancy Nancy camp at Broker Mountain Science Center. Um, she participates in sail swimming over the summer and last week was named overall swimmer of the week. And when she grows up, she would like to be an art teacher in Paris. Um, they're, I didn't know, but they're also um, joined by their, I didn't know she was going to come up, but good for her. I um, their youngest sister is Sarah Francis. Sarah Francis joined Dream Greenville County Schools on her third birthday, and she has loved her time with Miss Toth at Simpsonville Elementary for speech services for the past two years, but she is looking forward to starting 4K at Monarch in the fall. She was the youngest member of the Palm Dance Squad and is also going to be going to the Mini Mavets Camp and Rupert Mountain Science Center this summer. 
She's wrapping up her first season as a member of the Stingrays Guppy Swim Team, where she was the Swimmer of the Week <laughs> this week. Um, when she grows up, she would like to travel and take care of the kids. Um, so tonight, these Greenville County School sisters are accompanied by their grandmother, um, Miss Ann Pinckney, and their dad, Galen Bertishaw, and their proud mother, me. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Please lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, Miss Zula, for sharing your daughters with us tonight. The next item on our agenda is the adoption of the consent calendar. Motion to approve. A motion to approve. A second. Are there any amendments or additions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Dr. Royster. So Ms. Bush, I have some uh, introductions and announcements to make related to your action tonight, and also some introductions to make related to principal appointments that were made at special call uh, on the day of the Committee of the Whole earlier this month. First, let me begin with uh, assistant principals. Carrie Garrison, who will become the assistant principal responsible for Dunbar CDC. She's with us tonight. And congratulations and welcome to that new role. Do, do you have family or someone with you tonight? Glad to have you with us tonight as well. Thank you. Holly Rollison, assistant principal, Oakview Elementary. Holly, congratulations on your new role. Do you have uh, anyone with you tonight? Welcome to you. Glad to have you with us as well. Uh, Jeffrey Whitener, uh, J.L. Mann High School, going to assistant principal. Jeffrey, uh, congratulations on your appointment. Welcome to your, your new role. Do you, do you have anyone with you tonight? Okay. Um, Katie Duty. White Hampton High School, Assistant Principal. Okay, congratulations. I, I believe you have someone with you that's, that's, that we recognize. Huh? Congratulations on your new assignment. Regina Udy, JL Mann. Regina, congratulations on your new assignment. Do you have, you have one, someone with you? You're welcome to you. Uh, and also uh, Jennifer Robinson, uh, assistant at Fort Shoals Elementary. Jennifer, congratulations. Do you have someone with you? Welcome to you as well. And as I mentioned, we have some principal appointments from the uh, June special call. We first recognize Stephen Hampton, who is the new, newly appointed principal at Montevue Elementary. And congratulations. Look forward to having you in that uh, leadership role. Do you have anyone with you here tonight? Oh, well, so I certainly hope she feels better soon. Thank you for being here, and congratulations again. Uh, Leroy Platt, newly appointed principal at Tanglewood uh, Middle School. Congratulations, Leroy. Currently serving, has been currently serving as an assistant principal in that school. We welcome you to your new leadership role. Look forward to having you serve in that capacity. You have someone with you as well. Welcome to you. Thank you for being here. And our newly appointed principal at Hughes Academy, Adrian Mays. Adrian, congratulations. <laughs> we look forward to you assuming that new leadership role there. And, uh, I believe you have someone with you, someone with you as well. Two, two someones with you. Two <laughs> 
And well, welcome to both of you. Again, congratulations to all these newly appointed administrators. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Royster. The next item is our appearance of visitors, and I am going to ask Dr. Stiles to read our policy on visitors. Thank you. <clears throat> As each speaker's name is called, he or she should proceed to the podium at the end of the board's dais where there's a microphone and light system. Each speaker has up to three minutes to speak to the board. The light system will be green for the first two minutes and will turn yellow when one minute remains on the speaker's allotted time. In keeping with board policy KCA, abusive language or personal attacks aimed at students or staff members will not be permitted. All speakers are expected to behave in an orderly and respectful manner. The board will not engage in discussion with the speaker or respond to comments. The superintendent will designate a member of the staff to respond to each speaker in an appropriate and timely manner. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stiles. Our first and only speaker tonight is Jack Logan. Good afternoon. My name is Jack Logan. I'm the founder of Put Down the Guns Now Young People Organization in the state of South Carolina. And we are national partners with Project Child Safe and the National Shooting Sports Foundation. Standing with me is Anita Padden. She's a member of our nonprofit. The purpose of us being here tonight is to thank this trust, the other trustees here for placing the Evolve system into each school in to rotate it about in the schools here in Greenville to protect and prevent a child from getting hurt. That prevents a mother and a father from going to a hospital or possibly going to a mortuary to look down on their son or daughter. Earlier today, I was thinking, now what can we do for the uh, trustees? And I looked at, I said, all these women I said, now what, what, what do we buy the women? And then I said, there's only two men. And then I thought about Dr. Roster over there, and I entered a store this afternoon. I met one of the trustees' wives, and I told her, I said, I don't know what I should do. And so then I got in my car, and I traveled, and I traveled, and God gave me. So what we're going to do, we bought everyone a mug, a coffee cup, and uh, we're going to distribute those out to them and to my trustee in the district I live in, Michelle, every each year since we've been doing this since 2010, we place up we place a banner up around the most troublesome school from the previous year. And I was talking to Michelle two days before school started and she asked me and she explained to me not to put the banner up because what you instill in a child's head, they think about it. And I brought Michelle this rose because that meant so much to me, not just for Michelle, and through the years, Trustee Fair has helped us uh, on Father's Day events to reach out to kids who needs help. But I want to thank each of y'all for what y'all are doing for the schools and keeping kids safe. And uh, I know you go through criticism, but my message to y'all, keep God first and make the right choice for each child and everything will be all right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Yeah, we're trying to get you fat too. I said I'll meet you too. These are for me, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, if you want to, we'll sit. There you go. There you go. Sit them over there and we'll pass them around. Thank you very much. We're going to move into the superintendent's report. Dr. Royster. Just very, very briefly, Ms. Bush, I wanted to share with the board one one item of significance. Uh, we track, as you all know, uh, vacancies throughout, beginning really in late spring and throughout the start of the school year. But I wanted to share with you a, a pretty compelling number. Uh, as of yesterday, we have 126 uh, teaching vacancies. Now, that, that sounds like a lot, but in our size and uh, our nearly 6,000 teachers, that's not a great number. And what is even more important, at this time last year, we had 218 teaching vacancies. 
So that is a considerable improvement. Uh, very appreciative uh, of the work that our folks are doing uh, in HR and our principals are doing as far as getting people uh, interviewed through the employment process and secured. And I, and I, I believe this may also be an indicator that we had less turnover this year than we did last year. So that would certainly be positive as well. We don't yet know that number, but a very positive this time of the year that we're down uh, by not, not quite a hundred, but, but close to a hundred vacancies. So that's, that's very uh, reassuring news to us. Thank you, Ms. Bush. Thank you. That's great news to hear. Um, our next item, we're going to move into our action items. 5.01 is the uh, innovative course approvals. The recommended motion come from the Committee of the Whole to approve the local board courses as presented. It doesn't need a second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Next item is the Champions for Public Education. And that motion come from the Committee of the Whole um, to approve the nomination of Greenville County High Schools for the SCSBA's Champions for Public Education Award. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. All aye. those opposed, motion carries. Our next item is the revision of board, board policy GBRIC, personnel leaves and absences of parental leave. That motion comes from the Committee of the Whole is to approve the revisions to board policy GBRIC as presented. Is there any discussion, any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Next item, 5.04, is the naming of Greer High School alumni room. And that recommended motion come from the Committee of the Whole, needs no second. It is to approve the naming of the Greer High School alumni room in honor of Patrick Suttis. Is there any discussion or any um, questions? Yes, Ms. Doolin. You, will there be a, well, assuming this is approved, will there be a ceremony of some sort? Could we be invited? <laughs> For a ceremony like that, the school handles that, coordinates it, sends the date. We'll remind them to make sure that you're invited. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Venezuela's. <laughs> we have that duly noted from the Committee of the Whole. Uh, and <laughs> yes, Miss Middleton. Uh, I just want to say how uh, proud I am that uh, the former trustee <coughs> for my district is going to be uh, represented and honored in this way. Um, and I have talked to the principal at uh, Greer High School, and there will be a ceremony, <clears throat> and it will be in the fall. If any further questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Have a physical education exemption. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve a physical education exemption for one student at Malden Middle School. A motion and a second. Is there any discussions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. The next item is the building fund balance. Just very briefly, Ms. Bush, since, since it is a new item, the rest of the information regarding the building fund you all have had for a considerable amount of time because it was in the long-range facility plan, capital improvement plan. Uh, we have a, accrued a fund balance beyond our need to maintain fund balance, which we have to maintain fund balance in our building fund and debt service fund, just like we do in the general fund, but primarily due to uh, really uh, uh, improved interest rates we have about 11 million dollars that we would recommend that you spend out of that fund balance in the building fund 
And you see the explanations for that, uh, first having to do with security enhancements to add $6 million to the camera project that accelerates the camera system installation, shortening our timeline by one year. It's cost avoidance for future increases. We're able to lock in the current prices that we expect to increase by July 1, and it helps us absorb the 20% price increase we've experienced since we initiated the project in 22. We also will be uh, enhancing the system network in order to take advantage of all the analytics that are now available on the cameras, and it would expand the project to include uh, football stadiums in the district. It would also uh, provide transportation for the Evolve Systems weapon detection that we are expanding for the coming year. You all approved in the budget the personnel associated with that. We have identified a line item in uh, federal funds that will allow us to procure the additional Evolve system, and this would provide the transportation for that system. Uh, you see $1.7 million uh, as part of the recommendation to offset Chromebook price increases of 3.7%, <clears throat> and to help offset anticipated 1% additional annual growth in that price. And you'll see a resumption of our LED lighting project. We began this several years ago, and the funding sources we used at the time have basically dried up. There were grants available through Duke, and there were rebates available through Duke, so Duke Energy. Uh, now we're on our own to replace those, but we will will realize energy savings, which will help us to offset future rate increases, of which we've experienced several in the last few years. So that would be uh, uh, adding 3.195 million to the already 4 million that you all funded as part of the long range facility plan uh, capital improvement project proposal earlier this year. Glad to answer any question about those. I'll entertain a motion to get this on the floor. Hi, motion to assign $11 million in, unassi in unassigned building fund fund balance to meet security enhancement, personal learning device, and LED lighting project needs. A motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Yes, Ms. Doolin. But um, with the technology refresh, it's listed as including grades K through second in the refresh cycle. Is that new? It, we did not originally include we did not originally include grades K through two. Uh, we don't use the devices as frequently in grades K through two, but having been approved as a one to one district, which allows us not to have snow makeup days to do e-learning days, we need to have devices available for our K through two students. And instead of cycling down devices that are already out of warranty, we would procure new devices. Are the devices that are out of warranty still going to be used, or are they? We, we still utilize them as spares. Bill, do you want to speak to that? Yes, we still utilize them as spares, and we part them out when so that we have spare parts as well. Well, how often are they being used in those age groups? Like, I mean, you know, I'm living with K through, to, K through two, um, we got our Chromebook out exactly twice this school year, tw two times. So our, our, our family doesn't need a brand new Chromebook. We can have one of the old recycled ones for the two times a year that it gets used. I think the issue with that is we don't have a sufficient number of the old ones to ensure that every student has one. Mm -hmm. And this would ensure every student has one and as a recollection, over 10 years, we generally miss an average of three and a half days due to weather. This was a very unusual year. We didn't miss any. So we, we have had years where we missed eight or 10 days. We've had a few years where we missed zero or one, but the average over 10 years is 3.5 days. So we need to maintain our status as an e-learning district. We need to make sure that we have one-to-one -one devices for all of our students 
all the way down through K. And that's only part of that uh, increase. Is that correct, Bill? That's correct. Mm -hmm. The rest of it has to do with the 1% price increase. Yes, sir. And we also to help offset student population growth. <laughs> that's correct, which is about 1.5% projected a year. So will it still be that the new computers go to middle school or high school and the younger students get the older ones? That's, yes, that's, that's correct. Okay. Yeah, that would be where the priority would be for all of our older students to have the newest devices. If we had to utilize used devices, we would utilize them in the lower grades. But the other side of that is over the period of time until we cycle them out on refresh, they do need to cannibalize some of those devices to use parts off some to repair others that we still have in service that might be in service another six months or might be in service another year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What are all the different things that are part of the camera project? The first one is if we if we procure all the equipment now, we avoid an 8% price increase on July 1. The other thing is to offset the price increases we've experienced since FY22, which has been about 20%. So right now we're underfunded. We've paid for what we've done to this point, but it would cause us to be underfunded on the end of the project. And the other items would be to fully utilize all the components of the camera systems, particularly those components uh, related to analytics, we had to upgrade our file servers and the platform that we use to support the cameras. And then the last is, uh, particularly uh, with remote football stadiums, for example, uh, J.L. Mann, uh, Greenville High, uh, Greer High, most particularly those connectivity so that we can utilize those surveillance systems inside the football stadiums and the other football stadiums as well, but those are more expensive because they're remote locations. And this also includes upgrades at several of our schools with the camera systems or? Yeah, I, we're currently in a 100% upgrade. And we have, Dennis completed, I thought I saw Dennis, oh, there he is. Dennis, we've completed all the high schools. We'll have all the middle schools complete this summer and then the end of next year, the elementaries, is that correct? Yes, sir, that's the plan. All of which will have the new enhanced systems, greater analytics, greater clarity, greater distance, and they have the ability to interconnect with the evolved system. Thank you, that's all. Yes, sir. Mr. Cochran, any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, there's a motion on the floor. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, motion carries. The next item on is 5.07, general obligation bonds resolution. I will entertain a motion. <laughs> I wondering why I had to make all the motions today. Yes. Dr. Stalls. Yes, I would like to make the motion to approve the FY24 general obligation bonds resolution. A motion second. and a second. All those, any discussion or questions? Yes, Ms. Dula. I do have more questions. Um, in the attachment that was included in section one, article I, says that, um, you'll have to forgive me, I'm not that familiar with selling bonds. This says uh, that you want to sell $175 million worth of bonds for capital improvements and acquisition payments for November of this year and May of next year. Can you talk about what that is because... Those are the best project schools. Mm -hmm. So the best program, the schools were built by Beth, separate, third-party, non-profit. We 
buy those improvements, improvements in some cases they're whole buildings, but we buy in installments over time the improvements they made that we have benefited from since the buildings were occupied. So is that is that answering your question? Well, I am. I mean, I understand selling the bonds to build what was fifty schools or whatever in the last a billion, a billion dollars worth of schools, right? But the acquisition payments, it, it sounds like you want to sell bonds to pay the payments on the last bonds in November and next May. It's actually to pay best for their bonds. Best sold bonds to build the building. Technically, the buildings belong to best. We purchase back a portion of those buildings, or we purchase a portion of those buildings every year. And we'll do so until December of 28, obligating us through FY29. Now, that's not, it is an obligation, but it's not. You don't get the building, you don't pay it. I'm, I just, but we pay, even if we didn't sell these bonds, we would still have to make those payments. Or you wouldn't acquire the bill. And since we make the payments on those bonds, we're paying interest on those. Yeah. And then we sell more bonds to make the payments on the first ones. And we'll owe interest on that as well. So for that time period, are we paying the interest twice? No. Okay. Can you explain why we're not? Because that seems like you're, you're borrowing money to pay off. You're paying. There are two series of best bonds. Well, they're four, but you're paying them in two payments. Right? So you're not. These are to satisfy the obligation of the four best bonds in two payments. And in a minute, there's another bond payment having nothing to do with that. So we're not paying interest twice on that. So you can think of the GO bonds as, as making a lease purchase payment for the building. And, you know, don't consider the actual best bond payment because the GO bonds are sold to just make the payment for a portion of the building. And that's why we sell the GO bonds to make the acquisition payment. I might have to get together with you another time to have you explain this because anyway, okay. Thank you. Other questions? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion on the floor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Next item is 5.08, debt service budget. I will entertain a motion. Dr. Stiles. Yes, I'd like to make the motion to approve the FY24 debt service budget. Excuse me. Yes, debt service, debt service budget. Sorry. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Item 509, the best debt service budget. I will entertain a motion. Madam Chairman, Mr. I'd, like, I'd like to make a motion to approve the fiscal year 24 best debt service budget as presented. Motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Agent. Any discussion or any questions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. The next item is 5.10, the building fund budget. Yes. It's a good one, Caldwell. 
I would like to um, the recommended motion from the administration to approve the FY24 building fund budget. All right, I have a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second the motion. Motion and a second. Is there any discussion or any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion, all those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. 5.11, Food and Nutrition Services Budget. <clears throat> um, oh. Venezuela. A motion and a second. Is there any discussion or any questions? Ms. Zula. Thank you. Um, Mr. Urban, can, can you get to a mic? Or Dr. Worcester, I'm not meaning to go around you. You might know as well. Um, I wondered if now that there are so many more schools approved for the CEP program, do you think that your revenue will actually go up because of more of the extras that students might buy, like chips or cookies or whatever, because they do not have to pay for hot lunch? We do not. We factored all that into our budget. So we uh, included the 82 schools in the CEP to get us at a budget neutral level. Um, and we adjusted special sales accordingly. So no, we don't, we don't believe there'll be a significant amount of increased special sales. Okay. Um, your budget seems to be one that is a little bit unique in that there's a revenue in excess of expenditures, which is great, congratulations. Um, how, do you think that that will continue to rise like it has the past two years? little unknown right now because we don't know what uh, the government's going to do as far as funding goes. The last few years we received significant increased revenues to help us with COVID. Uh, prior to that we always had a, a slight increase over our budget but um, really won't know until uh, till the reimbursement rates come out in July. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any further questions? Comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion on the floor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion carries. Next item is our special revenue budgets. I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair. Dr. Stiles. I would like to make the motion to accept the FY24 special revenue budgets. Second. A motion and a second. Is there any discussion or comments? Ms. Uh, Ms. Call. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Title one hadn't been reduced. There would be, I think Ms. Brinks out there, I saw her somewhere behind Jack. Uh, that's a slight increase from the previous year. Ms. Brink, isn't that correct? There's some proposed legislation in Congress to increase that, but there seems to be a general stalemate over them doing anything in Congress. So we don't anticipate any reduction. Title one, title two, title five funds, title nine funds I, at all. I've not seen any indication from any of the information we get from the federal level uh, through the various associations and the, uh, in fact, we had a briefing last week uh, at the large school, count, countywide schools consortium, the federal regulation, federal law. There's nothing that would provide any indication we're going to get more money. And how many There's some proposals out there, but they don't seem to have much. How many, many Title legs, I funded so. schools do we have in the district now? Four, 14. 17 total. Okay, or all, it, does it still 
Um, is our cutoff in the district still like at 70%? Poverty. Yes, ma'am, it is right. It is right at 70%. Of course, we, we have to serve anybody who's 75% or above, but our, our poverty cutoff is right there at 69 point. Do we have any other schools that's close to that? Uh, yes, ma'am, we do. But when we tier them, we have they, they, they fall enough below. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And, and as you will recall, if we add, if we dropped further down, it dilutes the amount we can provide each school. Right. It doesn't generate additional funding. So right now we we stay at right at about seventy five percent. Is what you're saying? Seventy five is required by the federal government to serve seventy five and above. We go down to about sixty nine point mm -hmm. eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fish. Thank That's you, Ms. Goodwin. Call on any further comments, questions. Those in favor of the motion on the floor say aye. 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 The opposed. Motion carries. The next item is internal audit report package. Uh, thank you, Ms. Bush. As, as we've done in the past since the change in the internal auditing structure, we have provided the board with a copy of all those internal audits conducted. Each one of those also includes the management response. Uh, any question you might have, we've had to answer that or procure the answer for you. But I think the management responses are very clear as to our direction uh, based on the findings of the internal auditor. It's just for information. Yeah, it's just only. for information. We, we don't have to take any action on this. So, but are there any um, comments or questions for now? Or you can submit any of those later Certainly. if you have a comment or a question. You can submit those to the superintendent's office. Um, the committee liaison reports. Dr. Stiles. Yes, I'm pleased to report that the uh, ad hoc committee for the superintendent's evaluation met today and we had a very, very productive meeting. Uh, we reviewed the research, the current research on what makes an effective superintendent's evaluation. And uh, we feel like that we're headed in the right direction and we have several more meetings to go, but we're expecting a product that um, sets the bar for the state and um, and others may want to follow. And we certainly do appreciate Dr. Royster for his involvement with us on this committee. He gave us some very valuable information and insights. And one of the things that is uh, very telling that there is certainly a lot of difference between uh, the expectations for a superintendent in a large district like Greenville County versus a very small district. And so it looks very different across the nation. Uh, but again, we're on the right track. And I'd just like to, as the chair, to personally thank everyone who served today. We have a great committee and looking forward to continuing to work on this effort and coming forward with an exemplary superintendent's evaluation that is based on current research. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stiles. I want to thank those committee members also. But most of all, thank you for all the tremendous amount of work that you've put in to um, get, getting this started off um, in, in a great fashion. So thank you very much. Do I have any other um, committee reports? Any other reports? Seeing none, the monthly finance report. Dr. Royster. Uh, you, have, you have that in your packet. Uh, I don't think Ms. Dack has any item of particular note to bring to your attention. They're, they're duly, duly engaged in prepping for the July 1, later this week, uh, rollover of the budget. We're very much appreciative of the board's approval of the budget in a timely manner that allows them to do the appropriate testing, particularly that related to the payroll and ensuring that that is correct. Uh, and also working to close out this fiscal year uh, journal entry amounts where that's uh, one of the things we've done as you all know, for several years since getting the ESSER funding, is everywhere we can journal entry and expense to ESSER. We've done so, which helps to build the fund balance, which allows you to use that at your discretion in any area of need. And again, generally for those things that would be non-recurring, uh, allowed us, uh, one of the reasons that we were able to greatly advance some of the building projects that are uh, certainly uh, urgently, in some cases, needed based on population growth. Uh, so be glad to answer any question you might have about finance. Are there any questions? Mr. Cochran. 
just so I can understand the process better, um, under the special revenue category, um, the federal sources where we are, we've currently used up, I guess, uh, well, actually it's revenue. So we've only had 32% of them come in at this point. Uh, I was just hoping somebody could explain that process to me. It has to do with the alignment of the fiscal year. The federal fiscal year, October 1, Robin. So they run October 1 to the end of September. Unlike, I guess, I don't I don't know. I know Amory's familiar with the federal system. Most businesses are either or January 1 to, to the end of December. Most gov local government entities are July 1 to June 30th, but the federal government is not. That's why those percentages look odd. And that's also one of the reasons to maintain in fund balance uh, cash flow because we don't get the new amount in federal funds until this October. So we're carrying those federal programs for a period of time from a cash flow perspective. Thanks. So my only other question uh, that's in that same basic category, um, under our expenditures down uh, with administration and schools, where uh, at this point we've only spent 14% of that. Yes, sir, um, because each grant has restrictions on uh, what it can be spent for. Um, you will see that there's very little in the administration of schools, and it also includes ESSER money. Um, that includes the entire amount of ESSER money that's still available. And remember, we have another year to spend that ESSER funding. So that's another reason that the um, actual to date versus the budget seems a little different than you would think at this time. Thank you very much. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Cochran. Any, Ms. Goodwin Caldwell. Um, on the um, miscellaneous equipment expenditure and minor improvement expenditure report, is there a reason why we still have a big amount balance left in the, both of those accounts? Are we not buying equipment or uh, we don't need it? Because um, I see that we have like 573,000. Or is that 573? Is that million or that thousand? No, so if it's a, if it's that minor, minor equipment account, it'd be 500,000, wouldn't be 5 million. Okay. We've that's only generally, spent that's generally speaking, the last account we use for those purposes. Uh -huh. Those are things that come up unexpectedly during the year. They require the approval of the deputy superintendent. Most of our equipment is bought through line item planned replacement. So, so minor projects and small equipment, uh, a track, a pit for a track at a school. Um, signage for a school. Signage for a school. Mm -hmm. There's all, it just almost oh. any kind of, in in the scheme of our budget, small items that schools or departments request. And that money, if it's not spent in one fiscal year, then carries over to the next because it's a, it's a building fund uh, account, not a general fund account. So this money can be um, carried over? Yes, or and is carried over. What, what, what part of the year do they usually spend most of the money? I mean, because it says, you know, um, it, this it is the varies. April report and you haven't spent. It varies from year to year. Uh, well, I think one of the last big expenditures that came out of that, I don't know if it was this year or the end of last year, was replacing all the library furniture in a school. I think you may even have some pending requests for that now. Yeah, I hear that schools ask for library equipment. <laughs> it's money in there. <laughs> That's all. All right. Well, to, repla <laughs> to replace the furniture in a library, you might be talking eighty to hundred thousand dollars. Well, you got one, almost one six hundred thousand in that minor improvement expenditure thing. So, oh, and and we are you got it. we are generally. Uh, somewhat uh, tight-fisted with spending that money. 
Why? Better spend it before you lose it. Now remember what I said. You know how that, we do. That that's kind of the that's sort of the fail safe. We've got we've got planned furniture replacement. We have money set aside for that. We have planned equipment replacement. We have money set aside for that. These are for things that fall outside the general planned replacement cycle. But you will spend it up before it's time to, to we'll, give it we'll back, We will spend right? some more of it. We, it's not like the wheel will spend it down to zero because you never know what might happen. Well, y'all keeping a lot for what might happen. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's all, David. Thank you, Ms. Goodwin. Call on any further questions or comments? Hearing none. The next item is our election of board officers. You have your slate of candidates, and we're going to do this by normally do this by a show of hands. Um, the chair is the first office. All those, and we have two: um, Davy Bush, Carolyn Stiles for chair. And, All those, and, and Miss Bush, if, yes. if I may, since. You are a candidate along with Ms. Styles. Actually, Ms. Morrison Fair would be the one that, that would would, that would conduct, be awesome. conduct that All this, right. this election. I'll hand it over to you. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Bush. Uh, you have on your uh, in your packets or on your screen uh, two candidates for chair. Um, candidate Debbie Bush and candidate Carolyn Stiles, and we will go in order. Uh, all those in favor of candidate Debbie Bush, give a show of hands, please. You count them. You count them. OK. You have to vote. <laughs> oh, I have to vote. <laughs> Then, if you were counting, okay. All those in favor of uh, candidate Carolyn Styles, please give a show of hands, please. All right, there's a tie. I'm going to ask the. And just for the record, the tie is six to six. So should we vote again? Or yes, ma'am. Okay. There's a tie, and so we will vote again, starting with candidate Debbie Bush. All those in favor, please raise your hands. Candidate Carolyn Stiles, all those in favor, please raise your hands. There's a tie again. So you have a few options. Thank you. Uh, what are my options? <laughs> We've been what, here. What one would be to revote again, and you can vote until there there is um, someone prevails. Uh, the second option, and this has been done previously, is, and again, this is your discretion. You could provide a, a minute or two for each candidate to to speak about uh, their desire for the office. Or three, you can have a temporary recess for, for folks to um, collect their thoughts and, and uh, then reconvene after a few minutes. All right, thank you, uh, Attorney Berg. Uh, I think I will take the choice to let uh, the candidates each speak to the position and we will start with, I will start with candidate Carolyn Stiles, if you don't mind. I'll be glad to start. First, I'd like to share a few things about myself. I know we have board members that are relatively new and for those of you in the audience who may not know that I have spent a lifetime of service to Greenville County Schools and I've served in multiple capacities. I'm proud to say that I've been a classroom teacher, I've been a principal, I retired and then I became a substitute principal, and now I'm on the school board. I think that's a testimony to my passion and my love for this profession. 
In each of these opportunities, I had the opportunity to grow, learn, and contribute. And each of them has also strengthened my understanding of education in general, especially being on this board, which has been a great honor. Although I am retired as a principal, the passage of time has not dimmed my yearning to serve the children of our community or this profession that I love so deeply. This school year alone, I have dedicated numerous hours of volunteer service for the purpose of improving public schools in South Carolina, including my own Greenville County School. I fulfilled this role in a leadership position on Governor McMaster's task force for teacher retention and recruitment. It was a great honor, and I feel that our work has the potential to make a, a great difference for South Carolina. At this point in my career and at this point in my life, my desire is to continue to serve, and now in a different capacity. I've served as the board secretary. I've served as the vice chair. And now I, des I desire to serve as the chair. This is just a passion that I have. In all of my experiences, my goal has been to make a difference, to lead with honor, to leave it better than I received it. And that would be my goal as your school board chair. I think we have a great board. I think we lead the way in a lot of things at the state. I say that many times in our board meetings. But I would like to assume the leadership role because I think that we can still lead greater, perhaps even set the bar for the national level. No doubt if we work together and we work collaboratively and we work alongside each other we can make an incredible difference for our students, our teachers, our staff, and our community. I want everybody here to know that I would be extremely honored and humbled to guide our collective work as your board chair. I thank you for your kind attention to my comments, and I thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stiles. And next we will have candidate uh, Debbie Bush to speak to the position. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mar from Morrison Fair. Um, it's hard to believe it's been um, this much time that we've all spent together. Um, I've, I've had a tremendous uh, appreciation for Dr. Stiles and for Ms. Morrison Fair as we've worked together this year on our executive team. Um, having so many new board members, um, I think we have seven board members that have not actually been through one term yet. Um, um, several that this was their first budget and I think seven that will be going through as we're right in the middle of our strategic planning. and. Um, I've served on this board for 27 years now, and I've, I've had the privilege of serving as secretary. I've had the privilege of serving as vice chair and as chair. I've also been honored to represent Greenville County as the first woman from Greenville County to ever serve as the president of the South Carolina School Boards Association, um, which was a very um, humbling and learning experience. Um, um, it's not a desire to hold a title that I seek. Um, it was through uh, a lot of great thoughtfulness after um, board members came to me and during the year and said, well, are you all going to continue to be to serve as on the executive committee or would you consider serving as chair again? And that is a truly a great honor, those that um, especially you know, we have even former board chairs that were, um, that had, sometimes I think they have more faith in me than I have in myself. 
Um, and, and I think a good leader, it, it's best when people barely know they exist. And when the work is done, we say we did it together. And that's been my purpose this last few months has been able to respect everyone, to be able to work together, to lead us in the direction um, that is a, um, uh, that makes us stronger, that we're not always, we haven't always agreed, and we're not always gonna agree, but I promise that you will always be respected and you will always be recognized. And I look forward to what we can achieve in, um, in working together. And so that was why I offered myself up as chairman again for this next year um, and and was honored to pick Dr. Stiles as my vice chair because our policy said um, um, when Mr. Meek was defeated that you choose a vice chair and I think she's um, she she's going to be a tremendous chair someday so I thank you whether that's tonight or whether that's in the future she'll have my full support so I thank each and every one of you that have supported me and um, that's it. Thank you very much, ladies. Um, you've both heard um, candidates, the two candidates speak to their qualifications and their passions about holding this position. And so at this point in time, I'd like to call for the vote again by a show of hands. And I will start with candidate Debbie Bush. All of those in favor with a show of hands. And candidate um, Carolyn, Dr. Carolyn Stiles, all those with a show of hands. <laughs> okay. All right, at this point in time. And, and just for the record, is a, another tie, six to six. Yeah. Well, at take this a, point in time, I guess. You, that, you could either revote or take a. A recess. A recess. If right. You wish. I think at this point in time, we can take a recess. You have a, a time. <sighs> Ten minutes. That's good. Okay, we will all recess for 10 minutes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, that was a long 10 minutes, but we're trying to make progress on this. I'm gonna turn it back over to Ms. Morrison Fair. All right, um, did we come to a... We're gonna vote again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will vote again on the two candidates for chairman. And the first candidate is candidate Debbie Bush by show of hands. And the next candidate is candidate Dr. Carolyn Stiles, show of hands, please. Okay. We still have a tie. So, so you, you have the, the same options available to you. Um, could do a revote. Could could have a short recess again. Um, those are those are the two primary options. I'm I'm not sure. Um, you could always have another um, discussion moment from from each candidate, but I'm not sure that that is um, likely to yield any, any results there. So I think that the two most likely options would be to have a short recess or to take another vote. Could we have a recommendation from someone on the board? In the I think a short recess would be in to talk right. about our options. Okay. All right. Uh, we will take another 10 minute recess so that we can come up with uh, maybe an alternative. Since we are at a tie vote again, we voted four times and we have a tie vote. So we will take another 10 minute recess. Thank you. 
Thank you for being so patient. Dr. Royster, did you want to go, did you want to dismiss staff? Well, we've already given them a word about Okay. No, so All right. If we don't, if we don't okay. Thank you. We, <laughs> we just wanted to be thoughtful of all those of you that have to be back here early in the morning. So, um, Ms. Morrison Fair. Uh, thank you, Ms. Bush. In light of these events, um, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Sellers if he would like to make a motion so that we can maybe have uh, some closure. I'll be happy to, Madam Chairman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to make a motion that we waive board policy and in doing so elect the three sitting officers as they currently sit to a full term to the officers for the board for the next for this next year. Or no, it's or not going to accomplish anything. I don't think it will accomplish anything. I, th I think you could take another vote for the for the candidacy. Well, I, I'm sorry, just, just for the record, for, for Dr. Stiles. So all, all those in favor of Dr. Stiles. I'm sorry, all of those in favor of Dr. Carolyn Stiles, please show of hands. We still have a tie. So at this point in time, I will turn it back over to the current chairman, and I guess we will dismiss the audience until we vote. I, I, I think it's in order to take a, another recess. Yes, okay. um, if, we, I can turn it back over to the chairman and excuse the audience. No, you're, you still have the, the gavel. And so um, I, I would I would recommend taking another recess of five to ten minutes, whatever is in your discretion. Okay, in light of these events, I would uh, recommend that we take another 10-minute recess and can you stick oh, to the 10 minutes or five minutes because it's really not getting well i don't know maybe our five minutes has been 30 minutes so if we're going to take a five or ten minute break i'd like for it to be five or and not 30 or 40 minutes. well maybe another 10 minutes will let us clear the air and maybe think a little bit clearer so i'm going to suggest another 10 minute recess for those that need to maybe sort things out all right, thank you. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would, uh, in light of these events again, uh, I think I have a motion from the floor, yes, not from, excuse me, not from the floor, but from the board that hopefully will settle this dilemma that we've gotten ourselves in. Um, Turn it over to Ms. Angie. Thank you, Mr. Morrison Fair. I would, I move to suspend board policy BBAA and move for Carolyn Stiles to serve as board chair, Debbie Bush to serve as vice chair, and Glenda Morrison Fair to serve as secretary, and for those individuals to serve until the next election, which is June 2024. Second. Motion. Okay, we have a motion on the floor and a second. All of those in favor of the motion. Excuse me, all those in favor of the motion, please let it show by a sign of raising your hand.
Okay, it was unanimous, so that passes, and we will have. And you, you can turn back to the. the we'll turn chair. it back over to. Uh, Ms. Bush. Chairman Debbie Bush. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your cooperation. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for those about you, those out there that are listening. Thank you for the ones in the audience that stayed to be a part of this um, tonight. Thank you most of all to the board members. Thank everybody um, for working so diligently on this. And I am just, I can't be more thrilled to say that it was a unanimous vote at the end. So let the media reflect on that and not that we were we, we were divided for just a short while but um a, as we go forth through this next year i hope this next year carries us and i feel sure it will in the same direction Madam so Chair. mr sailor i make a motion that we adjourn you <laughs> You may, and I think that was unanimous seconds. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, motion carries. We stand adjourned.